Now that we've learned how to assign the priorities, the next step is to uh, learn how to actually use those priorities to determine whether the stereo center is R or S. Well, let me start by reminding you of the official method for determining R and S. Here again is that official method. The official method is that we are supposed to rotate the molecule until the number four priority is pointing away from us. And then we look at the one, two, and three priorities and look to see whether they're clockwise or counterclockwise. Now remember that in this series of videos, we are not gonna cover how to use the official method because doing that would require us to visualize and rotate the molecule. And we'd like to learn an easier way to assign R and S. We'd like to learn a mechanical method for assigning R and S that doesn't require us to actually rotate the molecule. So now we're ready to start getting into that mechanical method. Now, there's two different cases that we need to deal with for this mechanical method. Um, the first case is, what do you do when the number four priority is pointing away from you into the page? And case two, what do you do when the number four priority is not pointing into the page? Those are the two cases that we need to, have, that we need to learn how to deal with. So that's what we're going to go on to cover um, in the rest of the videos, the mechanical methods for dealing with those two cases. Well, the first case we're going to deal with is, what do you do when the number four priority is pointing away from you? Let's start with case one. Well, here's the method. If the priority four group is pointing into the page, then you need to determine whether the groups with priorities one to two to three are arranged clockwise, which is R, or counterclockwise, which is S, on the page. That will give you the actual configuration. If priority four is pointing into the page, then you should determine whether the groups with priorities one, two, to three are arranged clockwise, R, or counterclockwise, S, on the page. That will give you the actual configuration. So now would be a good time to pause the video and copy this method into your notes. Now this method is really pretty obvious. It's pretty close to the official method. Remember that in the official method, you were supposed to first rotate the molecule until the number four was pointing away from you. Well, obviously, if the number four is already pointing into the page, then that's very easy. You don't need to do any rotation. You can just leave the picture the way it is and then just look at the one, two, and three priorities to determine whether they're clockwise or counterclockwise. determine whether this stereo center is R or S. In this series of videos, I hope that whenever I pose a question, I hope that you will pause the video and then try the question on your own before you unpause the video and then watch the explanation. So I hope that you gave this problem a shot. First of all, we have to assign the priorities. Uh, again, I hope that you have or have printed out a periodic table so that you can easily see that iodine has the highest atomic number and the top priority, then bromine, then chlorine, and then fluorine. All right, now, where's the number four priority? It's on the vertical line. Remember that in a Fisher diagram, the vertical lines are pointing into the page. So that's how we know that we're in this case. The number four priority is pointing into the page because it's on the vertical line. So now we should just focus on the one, two, and three priorities. And you should imagine that you're moving from one to two to three, and then maybe back to one again in a cycle. So how would we go from one to two to three? Would that be clockwise or counterclockwise? Well, we'd go like this. One, two, three. And I hope you can see that this, the arrows in this circle are going clockwise. We would go around the clock to go from number one to number two to number three. Well, remember that clockwise is symbolized by R. So we're done. This stereo center would have an R configuration. Determine whether this stereo center is R or S. First, I'm going to use dots to indicate the atoms that are directly connected to the stereo center. 
We know that we want to start by just comparing those. And now comparing those dots, we can see the top priority is fluorine, uh, then oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon. Since there's no ties, there's no need to go further out and start making lists of the three atoms that each of the dotted atoms is connected to. Where's the number four priority? Well, again, the number four priority is on a vertical line. And we know that the vertical line is pointing into the page in the Fisher diagram. So the number four priority is where we want it, pointing into the page. So we can just look at what the configuration of one to two to three is. Well, it looks like once again, we're forming a clockwise circle. If you look at the arrows in this circle going from one to two to three, they're going clockwise. Again, that is an R configuration. Let's determine what the uh, R or S configuration is for this stereotype. This is the stereo center that's attached to four different things. This carbon's attached to a methyl group, an ethyl group, a fluorine, and we know this is, this is bond line notation. There's also a hidden hydrogen that I haven't shown. So this is the stereo center. Um, so let's determine the priorities around the stereo center. I'm going to go ahead and draw in that hidden hydrogen. That's generally a very good idea when you're working with bond line notation. Anytime you're trying to work with bond line notation to determine R or S, it's a very good idea to draw in the hidden hydrogen at the stereo center. So we're comparing this atom, this atom, this atom, and this atom. Those are the four atoms that are directly connected to this stereo center. Sometimes it can be helpful to mark the stereo center with an asterisk. Clearly, the fluorine is number one priority, and the hydrogen is number four priority. These two carbons are tied, so let's make a list of what they're attached to. This carbon's attached to one carbon and two hidden hydrogens. And this carbon's attached to three hidden hydrogens. Very important not to forget the hidden hydrogens in bond line notation. Clearly, the first point of difference is where this carbon beats this hydrogen. So this would be the number two priority, and this would be the number three priority. And good luck! The number four is still pointing away from us. So we can use this method and look to see how 1, to 2, and 3 are configured. So if we draw a circle going from 1, to 2, to 3, we'd end up going in a clockwise direction. And again, this is an R configuration. Uh, by the way, again, I'm partly trying here to model the notation that's useful when you're doing these problems. Uh, but one thing that you might not have to do is actually draw these circles. I hope that after you've done a few problems, you'll be able to see whether the configuration is clockwise or counterclockwise just by moving your hand around or your pencil around. Actually drawing a great big circle on top of the molecule is probably going to end up making it quite messy. Uh, so I do recommend making these dots and when necessary making lists of the things that the dotted atoms are connected to. Uh, you should actually write the priorities down. Uh, but after a while, it shouldn't be necessary anymore to actually draw the circle to see whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise. You can just kind of move your hand around and see whether your hand is moving in a clockwise or a counterclockwise direction. But I think I'll keep drawing the circles on the board just to make it crystal clear uh, what the configuration is. By the way, before we move on, try giving the full IUPAC name for this molecule. Try to write down the full IUPAC name for this molecule. There are four carbons here, so this would be called butane. Now there is a fluorine substituent, so it would be fluorobutane. Fluorobutane. And if we numbered the carbon chain, we would start the numbering on the left in order to give this the lowest possible number. So this would be the number one carbon and this would be the two carbon. So that would give us two fluorobutane. 
obviously notice that the numbers you use in the IUPAC naming are totally separate from the numbers you use to assign priorities. Uh, so uh, this would be in IUPAC naming the number one carbon and then this would be the number two carbon. And then finally, we have to say whether the stereocenter is R or S, and we know that it's R. So this would be the full IUPAC name for this compound, R2-fluorobutane. Very often when people are doing problems or test questions, um, they forget to add an R or an X to indicate the stereochemistry. So once you've learned about stereochemistry in your course, your instructor is probably going to expect you to include R or S for every nomenclature exercise that has stereocenters. So you have to keep your eye open for that. So this would be, again, R2-fluorobutane. Um, I think that some people might put this in parentheses, I don't know, um, but uh, whatever the punctuation is supposed to be, you would have to put the R at the beginning of the name to indicate the stereocenter.